Here are the kinematics equations. Uh, let's go through these. Um, now, you can see that there are five different equations, but actually there's ten different equations because there's one set of equations for the x component and there's another set of equations for the y component. So you can see that on the board, I've simply written the x component equations. On the board, I put the x component equations. And that's what we'll focus on here to start with. Uh, maybe one thing I should emphasize here up at the beginning is that these equations apply to objects that have constant acceleration. And that's what this whole series of videos is about. In this whole series of videos, we're going to be talking only about bodies that have constant accelerations. So that's worth making a note of. When we talk about kinematics, we're normally talking about constant acceleration kinematics. Again, these apply to constant acceleration. You can kind of see that because if the acceleration is changing, you wouldn't know what to plug in for the acceleration. If the acceleration could be one number at one point and a different number at another point, um, then we couldn't really use these equations because we wouldn't know which of those numbers to plug in for the acceleration. So you can actually kind of see that these equations are really, really are kind of assuming that we have a constant and unchanging acceleration. Okay, so again, this whole series of videos is really designed to deal with the type of problem where we have constant acceleration. Here's the equations. Um, I, I hope that you're able to uh, see all of these equations uh, that the, the blackboard is legible enough on the video. Uh, I'm a little bit worried that some of the subscripts might not be appearing, uh, but I'm doing the best I can. Uh, so I hope that you'll be able to see everything, including the subscripts, because the subscripts are very important. Uh, so here we have our first equation. Uh, I'll read it out just in case you can't see it totally clearly. Uh, v final x equals v initial x plus a sub x times t. V final x equals V initial x plus A sub x times t. Now, I should mention that you might see these written slightly differently in some places. Uh, first of all, for one thing, um, the initial velocity is oftentimes written with an O instead of an I. A lot of textbooks would use an O or maybe a zero for the initial. So sometimes books use an O instead of an I to indicate initial. Maybe that's even a little bit better. I don't know. Maybe it's a matter of taste. Uh, I'm going to keep using I for initial. But it's perfectly fine to use O or zero for initial, if that's what you like. Uh, all right, so um, we're going to use this symbol, but it means the same thing as this symbol. Also, what does it mean? If they just mention the velocity, but they don't tell you whether it's final or initial. What if they just use a V, and they don't say whether it's final or initial? Well, the convention is that that's the final velocity. So a lot of textbooks might write this equation, but they might leave out this F. They might just write it like this. I think it's a little bit better for a beginning student to include the F as a reminder that that's the final velocity. So these symbols mean the same thing. But we're going to try to include the F for the final. Okay, uh, so those are some points about the first equation. Uh, the second equation says uh, delta X equals, and then we have a fraction. On top we have V initial X plus V final X, and on the bottom we're dividing by 2. And this is multiplied times T. So this equation is, again, delta X equals on the top, v initial x plus v final x, and on the bottom, divided by 2. And this is multiplied by t. Um, a way that your textbook might write this, your textbook might write this like this. Now, this is actually kind of useful, because this tells you, this fraction is really just telling you the average speed. Can you see that this fraction is really just telling you the average speed? If you take the initial speed and the final speed, and we just average them together, then we're getting the average speed. Um, so this term right here is really just the average speed, and then this equation is kind of common sense. Distance equals rate times time. This equation is just saying that your distance equals your average rate times your time. So that might actually help you to remember this equation. So this is useful if it helps you to remember the equation. However, for solving problems, writing the equation out this way is much more useful. So um, I think it's a good idea to remember that this fraction in parentheses stands for the average rate. But when you're actually writing out the equation, I recommend don't write it out like this. Instead, I recommend this is the best way to write out the equation for actually solving problems. So this is the form of the equation that we'll be using. 
Uh, all right, um, our next equation, v final x squared equals the v initial x squared plus 2 um, times a sub x times delta x. That equation was v final x squared equals v initial x squared plus 2 times the x component of the acceleration times delta x. Um, so notice that all of these x's stand for x. None of them stand for multiplication. I'm not going to use... I'm not going to use a multiplication symbol because I'm afraid that that might look like an x. So when we're writing things down, if I wanted to show that we're multiplying things, I might just use a dot. We'll use a dot for multiplication. Um, but I'm never going to use an x for multiplication. So all of these x's just stand for the x component, not for multiplication. So this is 2 times a sub x times delta x. Uh, this next equation is uh, delta x equals the initial x times time plus one half a sub x t squared. This equation is delta x equals the initial x times the time plus one half a sub x t squared. Now a lot of books write this equation differently. A lot of books don't actually use displacement in their kinematics equations. Uh, instead they might write the equation like this. So a lot of books might write this equation in this form. Uh, again, I hope this is legible on the board. I hope you can see that the main difference here is that we're not using the delta x symbol. Instead of using delta x, we're separately writing out the final position and the initial position. Um, I hope it should be very easy for you to see that these two equations are saying the same thing. Um, I hope you can easily see that if, you, uh, that if you just replace this by the final position minus the initial position, you can rearrange to get this equation. So these two equations are definitely telling us the same thing. I think, though, that um, for beginning students, this form of the equation is much more confusing and much less helpful than this one over here. Uh, when you're solving standard kinematics problems, um, it's much more useful to form, focus on delta x. Um, so remember that delta x stands for your displacement. x by itself stands for position. So this is the final position, and this is the initial position. So this equation has position, and this equation has displacement. For beginning students who are having difficulty with the material, I think it's um, much better to use this form of the equation that uses displacement. Uh, so even if your book is using this equation, I recommend that you shift to this one instead. They're really two forms of the same thing, but I think this is much more straightforward. So I'm going to erase this because I think this is a less useful form of the equation. All right, and then this final equation, delta x equals v final x times the time minus 1 half a sub x t squared. Our last equation is delta x equals v final x times the time minus 1 half times the x component of the acceleration times the time squared. Um, a lot of books leave this equation out altogether. And that's okay. This is probably the least important of uh, the um, equations. Uh, most problems you won't need uh, this equation. Uh, but I think it's a little bit better for completeness to include this. So I would recommend that in your list of equations you include this equation too. Um, even though, again, it actually does come up less often in problems. But, but we'll, we'll be treating this as one of the standard kinematics equations, even if it's not in your book. Notice that this equation is very similar to this equation. Uh, there's only two differences. This equation, we're using the initial velocity, whereas this equation, we're using the final velocity. And this equation, we're adding, and this equation, we're subtracting. So if you know this equation, it's not too hard to get this equation. Instead of the initial, we use the final. Instead of adding, we subtract. All right, so I think it's best to actually consider all five of these to be the standard kinematics equations.